Right, hello guys, welcome to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial, or part 3 I think this is. Um, so I'm on my laptop here, and what we're going to be doing now is taking a look at how I'm going to connect to the computer that's running on the server. Now bear in mind, this laptop and the computer are on the same network, now that's really important. We will take a look in a later tutorial at how we actually connect to uh, an external network, um, but for the time being, I'm on Wi-Fi, connected to the router, the computer that the server's hosted on is connected to the router through an Ethernet cable, we're on the same network here. With that said, uh, I've already got gone and got P Perforce uh, Visual Client installed. So remember the second install, the install that we did in the second video, the Visual Client, that's already installed on my laptop here. So we're going to go ahead and fire that up. Now the information that you're going to need some information from your computer. So on the main computer, I've gone ahead and opened up Command Prompt. I'll show you how to do it on this computer here. So you fire up Command Prompt, Ugh. and you basically type IP Config. And what you're looking for, amongst, I've got way too many on here. Um, let me find the right one. There we go. So my wireless LAN adapter, if you're connected on Ethernet, then it won't say media disconnected, but basically you're looking for whichever, if you're using Wi-Fi or wired, whatever, you're looking for the IPv4 address. Now this is your computer's address. Your, this is your computer's address on the local network. So that being said, the address for my computer, like my, my desktop, not my laptop, the desktop's IP address is 192.168.1.119. Now this will be different for you. This will not be what you type in. It could be, it may not be. The chances are this will be different. You need to check what your server's running, what, IP, what the IP, IPv4 address of the server is, get that from command prompts, come back over to this machine, put that in here, and then we need to put a colon and specify the port on 16666 there. If I fire up now and press new as a new user, I'll get the option to enter a username. So I'm going to be Joel's laptop with the full name, password again, and an email address. Doesn't have to make sense. Again, it's just saved. It's now being saved upon the other machine. So I'm going to hit save there. Not going to make a workspace just yet. I'm just going to go ahead and get inside Perforce here. And we can full screen that. Um, so if I now go ahead, uh, and as you can see here, actually, on my laptop now, remember that server was set up on the main computer, I can actually see the FPS tutorial thing here. I can I could pull these down. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and make a workspace on my laptop now. So new workspace uh, with a workspace name of uh, Joel's laptop workspace. Now make sure that you name your workspaces real like things that can identify to you because Unreal Engine will use these workspace names to identify who's checked it out. So if Bill checks out a book from the library, the librarian will say, Bill has checked this out. Whereas if Bill used the name like lolkid95, then the librarian would say, oh, lolkid95 checked it out. So the other person wanting to work on it wouldn't actually know who the hell lolkid is. So use something that can identify you. So if I'm working with a team of three, we've got Joel, Tom, and Josh, I'd put Joel's laptop workspace, Joel's desktop workspace. Then when they go to check out a file, they can see, oh, wait a minute, Joel's on his laptop working. Or I can see, okay, I can't use that file because Josh's desktop is working on it, or, or Tom's laptop is working on it. So again, you know, just using common sense names here that allow us to identify these things. So I'm gonna go into my documents, uh, inside Unreal Projects, fire up a new folder, and we're gonna name this uh, test, or tutorial, FPS tutorial. FPS tut. Right? Now that's a new folder. There's nothing inside here. You can see that. No items, no folders, no nothing. So we're gonna go ahead and select that folder. That's where I'm making my workspace. Hit OK. Well, that's cool. Now if I go back on over to the depot, right click on it, and get the latest revision. Now what that's gonna do is that's gonna say to the server on my computer, so I'm watching my network usage on my computer right now. It's pushing up eight megasecond, and I'm gonna assume we can check really quick if we're quick enough that the Wi-Fi down here is actually pulling down at about eight megabytes a second there. So what that's doing is the computer is saying, right, here's all the data. Here's that 600 megs worth of Unreal project. Here you are. It's pushing it from the compute from the main computer down to my laptop now. So we can just give this a moment to download. Um, and what I'm actually going to do is fire up File Explorer, head over to those documents. Unreal projects and inside here you can now actually see that things are starting to come through the content the config If we keep refreshing that or rather just wait patiently oh. We 
can uh, just wait for those files to basically send over from the computer. So you can see how this the idea of a server is working now. Um, like I said, in the next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my laptop up to work on a mobile network, so a totally different network. I'm going to show you on the main computer how we're going to get it set up so the laptop on a totally separate network can see that. It's going to involve some port forwarding. Now, my port forwarding tutorial will work for a BT Home Hub 4 router. Your The, the way you port forward will be totally different. Please keep that in mind. Uh, I'll leave a link to a description to a website that actually helps you port forward depending on your specific router model. Anyway, nonetheless, I'm going to go ahead and fire up this Unreal Engine project here now that it's synced from the server. Uh, nope. Yep, disable it, whatever. Fire this up, and I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something. What I'm going to do on my, on my computer as well, put the laptop in front of the computer. Uh, I'm going to fire up the same project on the computer. So I can so now I can actually show you how two people working together would play out. So let me fire this up on the computer over there while it boots on the laptop. Now on this laptop, excuse the fans there, I imagine the Audacity is going to pick up those laptop fans. Um, inside first person blueprints, inside blueprints, you've got the um, Hello World, remember that? That's now there. Now what I'm going to do, on the computer over here, I'm going to go to the same blueprint, the Hello World, um, and actually, sorry, the first thing we need to do is connect to source control. You're going to need to do this on the computer every time you log in. Um, and you're going to need to do it on your laptop. Every time you fire up Unreal Engine, you're going to want to uh, just connect to that uh, source control there. So sorry, I'm just doing it on the computer at the same time. Perforce, uh, we're going to be using, remember the IP address from the computer? That's what you need to enter here. So it's going to be 192.168.1.119 colon 1666. Um, and then the workspace is going to be Wait a minute, what did we name it? We had a name of Joel's. Sorry, we can check up here if you forget. It's Joel's. Joel's lap, lap, laptop, not laptop. Sorry, laptop, like so. Who has a workspace there of Joel's laptop workspace? Accept those settings. So he's this this laptop here is connected to source control. The desktop set connected to source control. So what I'm going to do is on the desktop, I'm going to uh, check out that hello world blueprint right now on here I'm gonna go down and refresh it and you'll see now you see this little bit of blue writing here a little, little blue, blue text there checked out by alphabel at desktop workspace which means I can't actually do anything I am gonna force it to open without checking it out and what I'm gonna show you here is you see that tick there the tick is enabled okay so I'm gonna close it off I didn't change the tick on the desktop, you got to take my word for this. On the desktop now, I'm going to disable the tick, compile it, save it, and then I'm going to check it back in with a with a description. I'm going to check it back in. Now, what I'm going to do on this laptop is I'm thinking, okay, can I work on this now? I'm going to refresh it, and then you'll see now we actually have the option here to sync updates. It so that what it's saying is, hey, hold on a minute, Joel's laptop. The version on the server has something different to your version down here. So I'm going to go ahead and you can't you can't check it out just yet. You're going to need to sync before you can check it out. You need to have the latest version before you can edit it. So we're going to hit sync. That's that there the call and we can now check it out. Now, there is at the time of making this video, there is a bug with Unreal Engine 4. When you sync, it will not show you changes. For example, if I check this out and in fact, if I just open it up, you'll see the tick is still enabled, okay? I'm going to close it off. I'm going to close the editor off. I'm going to save that, whatever. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to kind of skip through that. Ugh, whatever. Um, okay, so remember, we synced it. I did not change that tick to a from a tick to a to a unticked on the laptop. I changed it on the computer, pushed it to the server, and then synced it here. So surprise, surprise. What happens is when I reboot this editor, the synced version will now appear. So like I said, this is a known bug with Unreal Engine 4 at the minute. The problem is after you sync something, you have to restart your editor, which unfortunately means logging into source control again. So it's a bit of a bummer at the minute, if I'm being honest. Um, but Unreal are a fantastic company. I have every confidence that they're working on this bug as we speak uh, and that they'll have it fixed uh, in time for a new, a new version of the... Uh, 
of the engine. So Joel's lap up. Give it a minute. Nope, I put in the wrong server there. It's actually one one nine. Come on. Ah, oh, man, that's a bummer. Okay, so what's going on now? Yep, Joel's LAPOP. Things never work when you want them to. Lap, Joel's. Ugh, oh, I forget to spell my own name. Lap up. There it is. Whatever. Okay, cool. So if I now go on over to those blueprints, uh, here we are. And if I check this out, go ahead and open it, you'll see that actually now the tick is disabled. So I didn't change that on this laptop. At no point did I tick or untick that on the laptop. I just synced it from the server. I changed it on the main PC, synced it up, and down it's come. Um, now I could demonstrate this with something a bit more significant. So for example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check out the first person character blueprint on the, on the desktop right now. Uh, and I'm going to add an event tick and off the event tick I'm going to call destroy actor destroy actor so a totally useless piece of code but nonetheless saving that in blueprints there uh, I'm now going to check it back into source control and on the laptop if I refresh this it's, you see the little, the little exclamation mark there? You may need to put this in HD for a second and zoom in and take a look. But there's a little yellow exclamation mark uh, and what that basically means is there are changes. So then you have to sync them up. Now that it's synced, uh, unfortunately because of this awful, awful bug, we need to go ahead and we need to restart the editor. So we'll fire that back up. No, yes, okay. Again, I'm really sorry if this laptop's picking up, if the microphone's picking up the uh, laptop audio, the laptop fans. Uh, I guess it just doesn't like Unreal Engine. And it's not on a hard surface either, so I'm not really doing it any favours. Anyway, so because we've started up the engine again, we're going to go ahead, connect to source control. Uh, 192.168.1.199. No, 119. Colon 1666. That's an at. Uh, and then it was Joel's laptop, and then the workspace was this one. And what I'm going to show you now is if I head into those blueprints. Now remember that we did the sync, we restarted the editor, fire this up, and look at that. There's the event take. There's the destroy actor. At no point did I create that on this laptop. I created that over on the main computer. So I hope that's shown you now how you can get it set up, um, based and integrated with Unreal Engine, and how you can actually connect on the same network. Um, so before I can edit this it needs to be checked out. So uh, I will leave a little, do you know what, I'll do a quick explanation now and we really, I really do need to cover the workflow. I may do an in actually do you know what, I'll do a separate video that covers uh, an explanation of the workflow with source control, checking in, syncing, refreshing, checking out, because um, it can get a little confusing. Um, but yeah basically I'll cover that uh, I'll cover that in a separate video. So I'm going to cut this off here, uh, come off the laptop now. And um, what I'm going to do is head on back over to the computer. And um, we're going to show you how to set the computer up so that the uh, the Perfos server is visible from from any network. Remember that this laptop had to be on the same Wi-Fi network? Well, obviously your friends don't live, live in the same house, presumably. And you still want to work with them, right? So I'm going to show you how to set it up so that you can see those Perfos servers over the internet. And you can then connect to your friends... Uh, wherever they are, whatever network they're on. Um, so I'll go ahead and stop this video here. Again, thanks for watching, guys. Um, and, yep, I hope to see you in part four, part five. I'm pretty sure the next one's part four. So, yep, see you in part four, guys.